So welcome to another episode of our podcast. Today we're here with Dr. Faisal and we are going to be offloading a very important and a very interesting uh, subject today. Dr. Faisal, how are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, today, I think this is um, could be a subject that a lot of people, uh, whether they have already arrived in Germany or did not yet, um, have multiply tried to reach out to you and ask you about this. So um, today's uh, uh, theme will be how to contact a professor. And of course, you're going to be uh, telling us a lot about that uh, based on your um, based on your experience and based on your uh, knowledge here in Germany. Okay, so this is something that I um, usually deal with. So. Um, so my colleagues or students ask me how to how to contact a professor. So again, as you mentioned, they can either be already in Germany or in Europe, or they can be in some other country and they are aspiring to come here. Um, but the question always is: um, uh, so so they have so either they want to contact professors for funded positions, or they want to unsolicitedly contact them because. Uh, they or they might already have a funding or they might already have an idea and they want to pitch it to them so then they can propose it to some funding agencies or so in any case they um they want to actively contact them and um they want to write cold emails and that is and that is what specifically we will be talking about we will be not not talking about any opportunities that have already been posted you you already know about them there is a different way around that we will specifically talking about cold calls or emails or actively perceiving opportunities with professors okay this will be this will be a very interesting uh, topic and i think it narrows down um, a lot of um, uh, it narrows down a lot of uh, what um, people would ask for and um, uh, for me, I think specifically, um, it is something that will be very beneficial. And um, if there is any shortcut to it, or if there is any kind of protocol that I can follow to do that, that would be very great and helpful for me. Yeah, so when when I was looking for um, opportunities, so I already had funding, I just wanted to contact a professor to start my PhD here in Germany. And it was very hard to understand this mindset of how should I start with. So I tried different ways. And eventually I found something. But later I realized there are, there is a much better way of contacting professors. And that is what we want to talk about. And now I also sit on the other side of the table. So now I receive a lot of um, um, emails from different people around the globe about about their expectations or uh, about their proposals and what why they want to join join our group and um that is and and that is why i think i can i can explain it in, in a better way um so contacting a professor starts with finding a professor first right mm -hmm. so um this is the most important um point that you have to understand is um that how to find a contact or find a professor first. The best is to go through your leading list. So maybe you have followed their work already or you already know about them because you read their research paper or you met them at a conference or um, you already have them in your network or you have already um, seen them um, on LinkedIn or whatever, and you think they are very close to what you are working on and this opportunity is appropriate for, for them. So that is one way of contact, that is one organic way of contacting a professor. So what I always, finding a professor, so what I always recommend people is, have you looked at your um, references or your reading list and maybe you already know someone who is working in a certain lab or a certain group and is working on exactly the same thing that you're working on it is a few steps ahead and you can always pitch your idea to them if you do not have or if you have a few like let's say two or three people you already know you're already in contact with them but um, but um, you want to contact more people and you want to find more then the way forward is for example starting with a simple Google search or uh, looking at uh, looking at people on LinkedIn or ResearchGate or asking around from your uh, supervisors or colleagues about different uh, people they know who are working on the similar topic or for example finding people in different conferences or networking events 
where you will um, find them now for example we have a digital world there are a lot of digital events happening so you can just attend them from anywhere around the globe entry barrier is relatively low and you can get to know uh, a lot about them there is also for example now um, youtube getting a pace where a lot of uh, institutes and and professors and teachers are putting out a lot of stuff about what they work on every day on youtube and maybe you are already following their work you are learning from them and maybe you can find their contact from there and and then contact them right so once you have narrowed down a list of people who have similar interests or who will be interested in um, your proposal, the next thing is to be very clear about your intentions. That is um, very important because um, it, it will become more handy later. So you have to clearly understand that you are contacting them for a funded position or you're contacting them for a specific project proposal idea, or you are contacting them for um, uh, an exchange opportunity, or a specific test or collaboration on something, or their advice on a, a specific document, or whatever. No? So you have to be very clear about uh, what your intentions are, why you want to contact this person. And maybe in the future, you will contact this same person with a different intention. So that will change. Once you have narrowed down your intention, so why I'm contacting this person, uh, do your homework about them, their lab, their group, and see if um, your intention resonates with whatever they have or whatever they are working on. So if you are asking for a funded position, you should have an idea that, that they already have a group, they already might have several funding position, funded positions or different projects that they are winning and then you're contacting them for it. So when you will do your homework, you will get an idea about that. Or for example, when, you're, uh, when you want to ask them to do certain tests or collaborate on a project, um, you have to know if they have this equipment or set up in their lab or they are themselves collaborating with another project partner to work on this. So if it will be, it will not look good if they do not have the setup and you're asking them to do these kind of tests or collaborations for, for a certain thing now. So when you will do your homework, um, the, you, will, um, you will know about them, their lab, their research group, and you will see if, um, if this intention of your resonates with what they have to offer. And once you have these three clear things, so, um, uh, the professor you want to contact, your clear intention, and then you have done your homework about it, now it's time to contact them. But before you contact them, you have to understand a little bit about the mindset of the professors or the lab in charges uh, here in Germany and generally in Europe, that they are super busy. Of course. They have to deal with um, their own research, their ongoing projects, their new funding opportunities, um, um, supervising students, um, participating in different events, um, coaching others, hosting guests, and so many other things, right? And it's it's not a very easy job, huh? <laughs> it's it's it, they are juggling so many balls together. So so yeah. it so if you're focusing on one thing, it, it is relatively easy. But if you want, but if you're to work on ten different things in eight hours a day, it it becomes tricky, right? So they are super busy. There is a lot of uh, inflow and outflow of information from their desk, um, and um, and also, for example, when we talk about the inflow and outflow of information, they receive a lot of emails from many different uh, people. Uh, for for different kinds of reasons, right? From students, from industry partners, from funding agencies, from the, the students they're supervising, from their from from the from the people who are working with them, and they have to quickly make decisions about all these emails and so on, and um, they cannot do a lot of. Therefore, they cannot do a lot of homework for an an incoming person right on top of what they're already working on and therefore they also do not remember a lot right so mm -hmm. the you have to understand this mindset that they're busy they receive many emails they can, do not have a lot of time to do their homework and they do not remember for a very long time right and understanding this 
make sure that when you're contacting them, you make their work easier. So you give them a split of a second to make a decision about uh, what they have to do with the request that you have forwarded them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, making their, so this mindset of understanding that I have to make this person's work easier will be super helpful when you will write them an email and that is what I am coming to now. So um, with this mindset, you should format your email in a way that it should have a very clear subject on what you exactly need. For example, it, it can be a little bit longer, but it should contain, for example, exact dates or exact offer or the number of tests or what equipment or if you need contact of someone or whatever. So the subject line should be super clear. One just a uh, very quick question about this. Is you being accepted by a lab or whatever here in Germany, is it only up for the professor to decide or is it like I don't know generally here in Europe is it like when you're applying for a specific place in um, a specific uh, position in a lab is this only up to the professor to decide um, generally so professor um, uh, generally one institute has one professor who is also yeah. who is also running the institute bigger institutes or or um, or bigger research um, organizations will have multiple professors mm -hmm. generally it is up to a professor to decide if this person will join or not right okay um, but uh, HR has some own regulation so um, uh, even if a professor decides positively they cannot go forward with someone if they do not comply with all the legal requirements uh, okay. and usually professor outsources their work to people who are working with them so maybe group leaders or people who are specifically involved with this facility so they will forward your request to them and professor will just do whatever they will suggest right okay. so even though it is final authority of the professor they will still depend on other people to help them make this decision. Okay. Right. Um, and coming back to this idea of um, how you should, how you should format your um, email, right? Mm -hmm. So start with, I am this person, right? One sentence. And then, uh, and then the next sentence is, uh, next sentence should specifically be why you are contacting this professor. So the second sentence. After that, you will specifically write what do you, what are you proposing, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what are your intentions, and what do you want to um, get out of this? And uh, then the next sentence will be what will be the outcome. So, uh, if the professor accepts you, they will get a PhD student, or they will get this funding, or they will get a research paper out of it, or or they will have a new collaborator or whatever. No? So be very specific about what will be the outcome for you and, and more importantly for them. And in the end, um, what, uh, and in the end, specific about what is the next step. So you need their signature. So if they want to have this outcome, they, uh, then they should sign something or they should uh, send you contact details of something or they should, they should say yes or no or whatever. No? or you want to have a 15 minutes meeting with them and they have to tell you the time when they can set up this meeting so whatever the uh, whatever your um, intentions are what what is the next step from th from the professor's side they have to take if they go positively in their direction and in the end you should just sign that with your contact details now you might need to add more information to it so maybe you have a funding agency who has offered you something and you, you already have that, but instead of writing this in the long email, just attach this to the email and just hint it in, in, in the main email body. Hint to it in the main email body. You might want to attach your CV, you might want to attach your recent research paper or your raw results or whatever, but hint to it in your um, in your um, email where you um, inform them about uh, who you are and why are you contacting them and if they want to know more details just see the attachment and just go on with the rest of the email and do not make the email longer mm -hmm. right so if i if i revise it so the email will start with dear professor and um, I am this person and I am con and I found you from here and I am contacting you for this reason. 
and um, I want to ask you if you have any uh, possible funded PhD positions at your institute, let's say, and um, and uh, I have this and that skill, and this will be great if I can work with you and we can extend this idea or um, or um, or the work that you've already done together in, in this certain direction. I have attached this and this document with this email for you if you are more interested in it. And maybe we can have a short meeting or maybe you can um, uh, forward this email to more concerned person or whatever. So an action plan, uh, an action step in the last point. And then you just sign it with all your information. So that will be your, your email. And hopefully this will make uh, the professor's work easier. Now, once you send an email, there can be um, three possible outcomes, um, right? Um, the uh, Either the professor will say, okay, or they will say not okay, or m uh, most of the times what we have experienced is they will just, you will just get ignored and you will not receive a positive or a negative reply. The important thing is you keep track of your application. So maybe you're not just contacting one professor or you do not exactly remember on which date you contacted the professor. The idea is that you keep track of your, um, uh, you contact multiple professors and you keep track of your applications. And then for example, you always remember when, a when you sent an email to a professor, what did they reply and what did they ask for in the, in the next step. Or um, there can be, or like we were mentioning, there can be three different outcomes. Either it will be an okay, or a not okay, or a complete ignore. If it is okay, then just follow with the instructions that they've asked for. If it is not okay, if they say no, then it cannot get worse than a no, right? So you can always uh, ping them with, okay, then if you do not have an opportunity or if you cannot do this, can you help me contact someone else? Or do you have any other links or connections? Or maybe you have a better idea about someone who can do this. Because now once you have looked into it, maybe you are in this network where you can help me with this, right? So ask them for further details or um, referring to the next person. And the third outcome will be um, an ignore, right? And the best idea about that is to be persistent. Uh, specifically in European culture, ignore does not mean no, right? Yeah. So, um, um, if you are tracking it, so the best idea is always to send them a reminder. It only means that you, they, they saw your email and they looked into it, they found it interesting, but they did not have enough time or they did not have, um, or they wanted to do more homework or they wanted to talk to more people and therefore they um, you have been hanging in the air and they were not able to um, reply back to you. How long do you have to wait till you send a reminder? So my idea is that um, always um, remind them almost after five working days. So maybe um, if you have sent them an email this week on in the beginning of the week, then send them a reminder in the beginning of the next week. Or if you have sent them an email in the middle or later this week, or like like Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, then give them the next week and, rip and, and then follow up after that week, right? So give them at least five, six working days to work on it before um, you send a reminder. And how many times do you have to remind them before you give up? Uh, that's a good, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a good question. So my idea will be that um, if you if you have sent a relatively nice proposal and you have you did your homework and you know that this professor probably will be interested in it and you have not heard from them after two or three reminders, the best idea is to ask if they are actually in the office or if they are there or available to actually reply. They might be on holidays, uh, they might be sick, they might be on- How would you ask? Uh, and they might be on parental leave. So the idea is that either you contact one of their colleagues or mm -hmm. some of their group mates uh, to uh, send them an email to just ask specific, be specific about your intention. Is this professor in the office? You work in this department or at the institute, do you know about that, right? Really, you can do that? Yes, you can. 
or you just call their um, you just call the contact number they they have on the website so probably their secretary will pick up and you can always ask i have sent this email multiple times i have sent reminders multiple times can you remind this professor or can you tell me if this professor is available if yes can you remind them to just reply me just give me a quick reply right a no can be acceptable but uh, but please don't ignore right so you can always follow up on your um, if if they are ignoring you and then you will fall in one of these categories right either they will say okay or they will say not okay if they say okay then follow the instructions if they say not okay then just ask them about um, how they can help you with your um, process maybe with someone else or another group or maybe you will ask them um, the same question in in a a longer duration of time so maybe after 3 months or 6 months and so on just remember that a negative reply is better than a no reply so you should always seek for a reply rather than just avoid a negative reply and maybe when you are contacting more professors uh, always remember that you only need one opportunity so if you are consistent with this process and if you are contacting multiple professors um um If through this method hopefully you will get a you will get a positive reply soon and remember that you only need one so you do not need a lot of um um uh, acceptances and um that is how i think you should contact a professor i actually have a a very interesting question mm. do you apply and do you contact professors despite your resume like um, for example let's say i am someone who works in 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 nanomaterials for example i mm. know that for example the best case scenario would be a max planck um, mm. laboratory which is i can admit between me and myself that it's so much out of my reach mm. but do i up still apply there um, despite my resume that that's that's a good question so what i will always uh, what i will always advise is do not self reject yourself okay right so even if even if you know the, the, this professor is out of your reach or you do not if you if your intention is clear mm-hmm. right so so the points that we discussed in the beginning if your intention is clear of why you are contacting this person and you've done your proper homework that that you will actually you actually want to work on something and this person is the best in the world that that they're working in do not reject yourself send them an email and then let them decide what they want to do with your profile right yeah. most of the times what i have seen is that that um um you will most of the times get a positive reply from these kind of people who are extremely influential yeah. because they have a very wide network and they will just instantaneously reply you yeah i see your profile maybe you can work on this and this and then come back or you can contact this person who now has a project because now they have a lot of contacts mm-hmm. and they can be very resourceful for you rather uh, rather than if you will just think oh i should not contact this person and you self reject yourself there's th- this is absolutely a no go yeah cuz at the end of the day you literally have nothing to lose yes. yet yes yes yeah. and uh, and the thing is that um this is this is free mm-hmm. and uh, and you will always get if you are getting a positive or critical feedback yeah. uh from from these kind of influential people you will always have this area of okay i need to work on this or this or i need to contact this person or maybe i should contact them after 6 months and mm-hmm. this is always better than no information at all so never self reject yourself mm-hmm. that's a very good point um i just want to also ask about the the rate of acceptance by by professors do you think like for example you being on the other side of the table mm. do you reject more than you accept always because because uh, the thing is that we we always receive a lot of requests mm-hmm. right but we always make space for people we really want to have in our group so so yeah. if so if someone is contacting me and i do not have funding right now or if someone is contacting me for a specific test or a case which is super expensive mm-hmm. i will not directly say no i will try to find a way to to make it happen right so there might not be an opportunity or funding directly on my table but then i will ask them to go in this direction of for example maybe we can 
do this or that and then you can decide for example if you so th- so that is an okay with certain conditions and then you can decide yeah. if you want to go in this direction or maybe it is easier to go with another professor who is who has where you will have to work less and you will get the same output right but um your question was do we reject more of course but if we really want to have someone in our group we will always find a possibility to do that somehow and that depends on their resume yes of course yes and uh, and uh, for example how they are approaching us how clear they are with their intentions how well they have done their homework so if they have done most of this already then our work is much easier so we just forward this request or this email to yeah. a more concerned authority or more concerned person mm-hmm. and ask if they have funds or possibility or or something like this so making the work easier is always much more beneficial and helpful yeah mhm and uh what about the fact that um do you think that the quantity of application matter you mentioned that you only seek for one opportunity but then uh given the fact that uh, you being on the other side of the table reject a lot so mm-hmm. i should i should probably apply for so many things even even if that means that i am a little bit slightly going out of what i am um what like going away from my background so for example me as a as a chemist i actually specialize in in nanochemistry and here i am i'm doing non ferrous because mm-hmm. i was accepted here mm-hmm. so do you think that um the quantity of applications and the diversity of applications also is something that we should do uh, oh, absolutely as long as as long as your intentions are clear and you exactly know what you are asking for mm-hmm. so if if you have done your homework and you know for example this professor will be interested in this opportunity that is uh, that is an overlap of what they are working and what i am working and it will it will give us a nice output yeah. then it is always a good idea to pitch this to them and then what i always say is you if you have done the first step so if you exactly know which professor you want to contact and why and your intentions are clear then just go for it let them decide if they want to go forward with it or not do not self reject right and send as many requests as you can handle properly at mm-hmm. one at one point in time so you do not have to you, you may be need to send 100 requests but do not send all 100 today so send four or five today wait for wait for some time let them say no and then continue with the next ones how is that going to help you uh um, because then you will always start from the top mm-hmm. so you will know the best and the closest professors or people in your field and you will contact them first to know what is their opinion about your work and then you will slowly go down to relatively less concerned institutes or people and and areas where where you will be slightly overlapping with their experience or expertise mm-hmm. and and the chances are that that if you will if you will track your applications if you will focus more on what they are offering and what you are asking you will probably get multiple opportunities in the top tier and you will not have to go down at, to- at all no, but if no. you but if you just want to send out 100 applications every day mm-hmm. you will just randomly throw it everywhere and you will not really focus on the high potential slots or people you might have contacted and and, and that is not good Yeah. One final question Dr. Faisal about this topic is uh specifically about the last part you've mentioned. Um now as an ac- applicant, uh what we like to do is to have a template and just send it to whoever is a potential um a potential laboratory, a potential professor. Do you think that it is right or wrong to to actually uh make just one template and try to send it to everyone? or instead of that we should um make it accustomed and and just change it accordingly to the uh laboratory um in terms of interests or in terms of that person because it's a lot of work it's a lot of work and it's um it's 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 a reason to be lazy so some people just don't want to do the hard work and and just try to make one applicant that is uh diverse enough or general enough to fit every kind of um possibility So what do you think about that? Yeah, so so again template is template is a very large word in 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 general terms. So if you have if you have 
exactly same email so that is that is just copying pasting that is not a template right so yeah. it, when we were discussing how you should write an email i already i already proposed a, a template right mm -hmm. so the template is start with dear professor ha, uh, say one sentence about you and one sentence about um, how you found this professor and then one sentence about what why you're contacting them and then for example continue with uh, talking about what you're asking and what is in it for them and for you and then uh, what will be the outcome right and mm -hmm. and then the last part is what is the next uh, uh, what is the next action step they have to do if if they agree with this idea? Yeah. So this is generally a template, mm -hmm. but of course, depending on who you are contacting and what are your intentions and uh, and um, and what will be the outcome will be different for every professor. So you will have to change it a little in a way that um, that professor has to think less. So they see that you have already done your homework and you exactly know what you need and you exactly are asking for the right thing. It will make their work easier and then you will get m much uh, faster and positive responses. One more thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the What are the documents that you should attach to your email? Like f um, sometimes, especially when you're uh, writing a research proposal or or maybe trying to just get an acceptance from any kind of uh, of a university or any kind of professor, you would like to also write a motivation letter. Mm. And that, that was actually my question. Like uh, maybe the email wouldn't change a lot. If you had like one template, it's okay. But if you wanted to write a motivational le letter, then this should change from one, uh, from mm. one lab to another. So um, um, my question is, what do you think are like at the first contact, what do you think are the best documents to send? So you have your CV, you have your. Yeah. So so what what I think is that you you should not attach a lot of documents with your email mm -hmm. if 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 not necessary, right? So attaching a, a motivational letter or your degrees or your published thesis papers or whatever is not important if you have written your email nicely. Right, and, and your CV nicely, and if you have paced yourself nicely, so if and if you have placed yourself nicely in their group, and you have exactly told them what what you want and what will be the outcome, I think then the next step is they will ask you for your CV and other documents they need to share with someone, right, yeah. and that is the point where you should share your documents. the The primary idea of this is if you are if you are attaching multiple documents with your email or if you have links in your email. By default, many systems now in Germany automatically flag your email and it goes into the spam rather than into the inbox and you will never hear back from them mm -hmm. on, on this email. Yeah. So if you just write a, a, an email in plain text without boldifying anything or without italicizing anything. So if you just write an email in plain text, the chances are it will directly go in their inbox and you will get a and you will get a reply. And in that reply, then they can ask you for your CV, for the other documents that they need to proceed further. And that is what I said, that you just have to follow the instructions then. In 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 the best case, or or maybe you just attach your generic CV with, with the email. So if they want to look into it, they can. But but that's it. Mm -hmm. On the first contact, you please do not attach any documents. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. One thing that you kept mentioning, Dr. Faisal, is that um, what's in it for them and what's in it for you? What mm. do you mean by what's in it for them? Um, yeah, that that is that is nice. So you, um, um, it is, it is, it is again understanding about it is uh, again showing empathy and understanding their mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So they probably receive a lot of emails about um, I want to be in your group because I want to grow or I want to learn or I want to do this, right? But the thing is that um, they are mo they want more people in their group or in their labs who can contribute to whatever they are working on and who can enrich their group and can bring something on the table. So the most important and the necessary thing is you show them what skills or expertise or ideas you can bring on the table and what will in, what will be in it for them. For example, 
you will bring your own funding or you will bring your own material or samples or you have a certain idea they will not need to um, they will not need to invest a lot of money in but will yield in a new proposal or a research paper or something like this mm-hmm. so the important idea is to understand um why would they invest or spend time in having you in their group so what will in what will in what will be in it for them right and it and 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 you just have to do your proper homework to understand that right so it can be one more phd student one person who knows how to operate this software and and then it will make their work easier one person who knows how to do this certain job much effectively or or with a new tool and that is what they have and they have been using uh, a different methodology or different tool all by themselves and now th- they will have new idea or you are a person who can give um another aspect uh, another um, prospect to something that they're already working on so 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 if you will do your homework properly you will see the opportunity that you're pitching to them what will they get out of it usually we think it is understood that we will have a we will have a publication at the end or we will have a project proposal at the end or or um or they will get something out of it but do not consider that it is just understood explicitly mention it so they know that you are understanding their point of view as well Okay, Dr. Faisal, thank you so much for this fruitful conversation. It was very beneficial for me and hopefully for everyone who was listening too. Um, thank you so much. And uh, this was Taqwa Khalifa and Dr. Faisal Al-Qayyum from the University of uh, TU Baf of Khaybak. Uh, see you again next week. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.